Hey everyone, this is the new 2024 M4 iPad Pro, and today I'll be showing you a day in the life using this iPad as my main computer. I'm starting out today at a local coffee shop. It is a beautiful day here in Toronto, so I wanted to get up early and start on my work. First up, getting through some emails. And using the new Magic Keyboard is actually such an improvement with the aluminum palm rests, the excellent keys, and the new function keys. I'm definitely quite a fan. Oh, and the trackpad, which is actually bigger this year, is pretty great too. I've also started working on a mood board and a freeform document for a fun photo shoot I'll be working on later today, but we'll talk about that pretty soon. After a solid hour of working, I toss the iPad in my bag, and now, time to head out. I wanted to head a little bit outside of the busy downtown core for a bit and head to a quieter place to do some thinking. It's a beautiful day, might as well head to the beach. I think what's so great about the iPad Pro is just how portable it is, and especially this year with its super thin design, it makes it even more portable It fits in a small shoulder bag and weighs basically nothing. So taking it to the coffee shop or a beach is super easy. And with the brand new super bright OLED display, I could completely see my screen outdoors even in direct sunlight. Pretty impressive. I just got back from a two week vacation, which gave me a lot of time to actually think about some of the changes I want to make in my life. So once again using Freeform, I started the document listing some things I want to do and some changes I want to make in my life in the next six months. And the Apple Pencil and Freeform is an amazing combination. Freeform is just this infinite canvas and the Apple Pencil with some of the new upgrades is a great addition. And this document is something I can keep working on and adding to, but so far, I think I have a pretty good list of things to start on. After a bit more work on the beach and my battery barely taking a hit so far this morning, I headed out back into the city. Before getting back to work, I was feeling pretty hungry so I stopped off at a local deli and grabbed a quick sandwich and watched a few YouTube videos on the iPad. And now at the studio, time to shoot. Okay, so my concept for this shoot is basically documenting a bunch of my old Apple computers I've been collecting by taking really clean, simple photos of them and also arranging the photos in a menu style format, inspired by some of these diner menus. I got my white backdrop set up, tripod with my phone, lighting all good to go, and now it's time to shoot. Apple really had some amazing designs back in the early 2000s which really pushed the boundaries of design and material choices and are really a lot different to what we have today, of course. And that's why I think it's important to actually document these pieces because they are incredibly unique. After getting a bunch of photos, I airdropped them from my phone to my iPad and headed up the stairs to work on the edits. I plug my iPad into my Pro Display over USB-C, which should charge it up a little bit while I work. Not like I really need the extra charge though, because I'm still pretty close to 80%. I imported each photo into Photoshop for iPad. And ever since it came out a few years ago now, it has received quite a few updates, and it actually is very usable and useful. It has all the major tools that I use and expect, and also things like generative AI, which is very useful and fast on the iPad for quick edits, as well as clone stamp and healing brushes to clean up the backgrounds. I can also make adjustment layers to modify the colors, brightness, and curves, and some things do take a few more clicks in the desktop version, but still, it's pretty impressive. And here are the final individual edited images, and they're simple and clean, just how I wanted them. I exported each image and dragged them all into Adobe Illustrator, which is also pretty impressive on the iPad. Now for the group menu shot. I can arrange images very easily, choose fonts from Adobe's massive library, and adjust the size of the background. And after some playing, this was my final composition, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's a fun project to really test out the iPad and see if it's actually capable of doing more intensive edits, and I think it's passed so far. And now, time to head out. First, a quick stop at the grocery store to grab some items for meal prepping, and now, time to head home. After settling in, I took out the iPad to do a bit of video editing in Final Cut Pro. 
I have like so much video footage from my recent trip to Italy and I eventually want to make a longer YouTube video showing my trip, what I brought with me, and I think I have to at least get started on some of the intro segments. Final Cut Pro for iPad is something that many of us have wanted for a very long time and it eventually came out and we all forgot about it very quickly. Having actually used it for a couple of video editing projects so far, it's actually pretty solid. Similar to Photoshop, some features are missing and some things take a lot longer to do on the iPad version than the desktop version, but for a quick edit, a quick TikTok or reel, it really is perfect. And even with the 11 inch iPad's display, it's totally doable and performs extremely well with the M4 processor. No lag, no slowness, smooth playback, and it cuts through 4K footage, no problem. It does take a bit of time to learn all the shortcuts and how to actually edit properly on the iPad, but it is fairly intuitive. I spent some good time editing and eventually I had a nearly complete timeline, and here's what I have so far. Pull up in the X type Jag, I'm in the back. Windshield wipers moving so fast, they about to crack. Looking for love, I never get at. Choosing my aim, polo boots for the rain. I'm in the telephone booth with pain. Unlock my phone and now I'm dialing. Somebody that's inspiring, someone that I'm admiring. I need the smallest violin to play while I'm deciding. The slate is giant in front of me, looking real Goliath. And nobody picking up the phone, shit, I'ma have to try again. I charge it to the game. After I was done, my battery drained only a little bit, but definitely not as quick of a drain compared to using Final Cut on the Mac, which drains very quickly. It's very well optimized on the iPad. I quickly fed my cats and then actually got to work on feeding myself. I made a bunch of these breakfast burritos to freeze, but for a quick dinner tonight, I made an extra one and tossed on Midnight Diner on my iPad to watch while I eat. After doing the dishes, I had to change to head out for some evening events. I tossed on a jacket and I'll leave behind the iPad for a bit of a break for now. First stop of the night, a gallery opening at General Hardware for Toronto artist Joe Fleming and the show was pretty great. Then I headed west to Mercedes' new massive dealership location launch party. They told me it was going to be a pretty crazy event with some performances, food, drinks, and so many incredible cars on display, and they definitely weren't lying. After some time exploring and taking photos, I decided to head out, and I'm pretty tired. After getting home, I grabbed the iPad and wanted to relax a little bit after my long day. I've actually been getting back into playing Minecraft and honestly, I do find it very relaxing and really fun. It plays very well on the iPad, but you definitely do need to use a mouse or controller because the trackpad just doesn't work. After some solid time playing and finding a village, I headed to bed, but first I wanted to watch a couple shows. By the time I was ready to go to sleep, my battery was at around 30%. I decided to plug it in overnight, but honestly, I probably could get away with not charging it till later tomorrow. I used my HomeKit shortcut to close my smart blinds, and now it's time to sleep. Good night. So that was a day in the life with the new 2024 M4 iPad Pro. And I gotta say, using this iPad for this full day as well as the past week has been a pretty great experience. The design is amazing. It's so thin and light. The new Magic Keyboard case is a huge upgrade and performance wise, this iPad can really keep up with everything I wanna do. And actually using this for all the tasks that I would normally use my laptop for, I didn't really miss my laptop and I've used my laptop a lot less ever since actually getting this device. Now, some things in Final Cut Pro or Photoshop can be a bit more complicated to do and some features are just really not there at all because they haven't added them yet. 
But for almost everything else, with all the upgrades Apple has made to iOS, whether it's in Safari, or it's with the Files app, or just the apps in general, I can do a lot of my daily tasks on this device. The real deal breaker year after year is if the iPad has the software and applications to do the things that you need to do on a daily basis. And for some people, that's possible, and for others, it isn't. In my case, I've been very impressed with all the things the iPad can actually do with all the new software updates and features, and it's been a pretty great experience. My full review on the iPad Pro is coming soon, but for now, I want to hear your thoughts on this device in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.